From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pat. This is my third call. Where have you been? Out buying some tackle. Want to go fishing? Fishing? Yeah, I'm heading down to New York State. Esopus River, maybe the beaver kill. Trying to snag myself some nice trout. And Patsy, my fishing is one thing you aren't going to interfere with. Wouldn't think of it. But why don't you try Lake Mojave? Huh? Where's that? Along the Colorado River, out between Nevada and Arizona. What? Sure, be the guest of greater southwest insurance and liability. What are you talking about? I don't know how you'd value those Esopus River trout. But there's a fish out there that may be worth three million bucks. Johnny? I'll be right over. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Expense account item one, cab fare from my apartment to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, 8242 North Spring. When I got there, Pat McCracken was standing holding the door of his office open for me. Come on in, Johnny, but don't bother sitting down. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Means you haven't got time, you all pack. Oh, you bet I am. For a trip to the Esopus and some of those pretty rainbows in Eastern Brook Trout. Got a new lure oil called Fast Strike I want to try out. I hear it's great. Sorry, but if there's going to be any actual fishing, it's going to be for Lake Mojave Bass. So you. Here, there are your plane tickets. Here to New York, nonstop to Los Angeles, and out to Las Vegas. And there you'll have to go to Kingman, Arizona by car. Slow down, boys. Slow down. The man is Ian Kingman is Jake Kessler at Southwest Insurance. Oh, Insurance. Pat. Yeah? You mind telling me what it's all about? The Midas touch mine. New racket in uranium? I said Midas. Gold mine. Oh, sure. Well, uh, what's the insurance angle? Ask Jake Kessler when you get to Kingman. Well, oh, but you can at least tell Look, me what... you've only got 20 minutes to catch your plane to New York. You mean if I decide... And I'm... with a million and a half dollars, maybe three million at stake, nobody's going to quibble too much over your expense account. Uh, maybe I should take a crack at those Lake Mojave bats. <laughs> expense account items two and three, two ninety even, a handful of American Express traveler's checks, and cab fare back to my apartment for my luggage. Then to the airport from my plane to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. It was 11.30 p.m. when the big plane slowly glided down out of the clear starlit sky. And unless you've seen the millions, billions of stars that twinkle brightly through the clear, dry air over the Mojave Desert, you've missed a real thrill. We glided down toward the landing strip on the edge of the town of Las Vegas. From the air, the myriad multicolored lights made the fabulous resort sparkle like a field of jewels. Item 4, 30 cents phone calls to car rental agencies. They were all closed. Item five, 65 cents per cab to the Flamingo Hotel, where I decided to spend the night and drive on to Kingman in the morning. Item six, hotel overnight, food and uh, incidentals, $178.30. If you know Las Vegas, you know what that word incidentals means. Fifteen odd and black. Place your bets, please. Oh, nice and there we go. I'll say this much. I tried to make some expense money on the side, but, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't have tried to cover so many of the gambling joints. If I'd stayed at the Flamingo, or I'd always made me a buck or two at the casino. But this time, Lady Luck just wasn't on my side. Anyway, well... Item $750, deposit on a rental car the next morning. I headed south and east toward Kingman, Arizona. First stop, Hoover Dam, where that tremendous hunk of steel and masonry straddles the Nevada-Arizona state line. And I took a brief but longing look at what I could see of giant Lake Mead. I wanted to stay right there, break out my fishing tackle, and take a crack at some of the huge lunker bass for which Lake Mead is famous. But duty is duty, or something. Anyhow, I hit the highway again across the hot, dry desert toward the city of Kingman. At this time of year, at this time of morning, the thermometer hits the hundred mark without any trouble at all. And the occasional swimming pools and motels outside Kingman look pretty inviting. 
But I drove straight to Jake Kessler's insurance office on East Palm Drive. Oh, hi. You must be Dollar. It's a good name. Come on in. Jake was tall, angular, well tanned, and dressed in blue jeans, open denim shirt, high heeled boots, and broad brimmed hat. He looked as though he'd be more at home on a range pony than in this insurance office. All right, Dollar, let me tell you what this is all about. Okay, thanks, Mr. Kessler. Jake, you want the folks around town to think I'm putting on airs? Okay, Jake. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Johnny, I hope you didn't make any arrangements to stay right here in Kingman, did you? No, my bags are still out in the car. Uh, good. I got a place waiting for you down at Catherine Landing. Where's that? Lake Mojave Resort's what they call it now. It's nice cabins, good restaurant, nice people right down at the edge of the lake. Too bad you aren't a fisherman. Well, uh, <clears throat> I uh, just happened to have brought along a couple of rods and reels. Good <laughs> boy, then you'll love it. Buster Favor down there will show you spots where you can haul in the prettiest mess of largemouth bass you ever saw. Five, six pounds, maybe more. Oh, stop making my mouth water, Jake. I'm supposed to be here working on a case. Well, every man's entitled to a little time off for fishing. And you look like you could stand some. Brother, you are killing me. Listen, Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau said something about a gold mine. Uh, yeah, I contacted Pat because I knew he'd know where to find you. It's the Midas Touch Mine, Johnny. And it's right down in that neighborhood where you'll be staying. Well? The mine was abandoned back in the early 30s. Worked out, apparently. But about a year ago, hard luck Dennis took another look at it. Who's he? Dennis? Yeah. Prospector, promoter. Here and there, Arizona, Nevada, California, he's found himself an old mine, pecked away at it, and managed to scratch out a fair living for himself. You said promoter? Yeah, well, I was in Texas, mostly. Never was able to get the full story, but it appears he got some folks to invest in some kind of phony oil stock down there a couple of years ago and had to skip out. Couldn't have been too serious, though, because the law never bothered chasing him up here. Or else he was able to make things look legal enough. Could be, could be. Anyhow, he's been back in this country for a while now, poking around the hills, looking for the big strike again. You know how prospectors are. Yeah, I've heard. Finally, a while back, he started prowling around the old Midas Touch. First thing you know, he got a lease on it. Well, I still don't see the insurance connection. You will. You will. And you won't like it. Okay, go on. Well, next thing we knew, he'd got a report on some ore samples he'd brought into town here at the assay office. Johnny? Well, you wouldn't believe it. Good, huh? Johnny, it looked like a prospector's dream come true. Ore worth about $1,100 a ton. All right, now, it takes money to work a mine like that, no matter how you figure it. First of all, he had a big pumping job to do. Pumping? Out there in the middle of the desert? That's right. You see, when there was just the Colorado River running down the valley, it was different. But since Davis Dam was put in to form Lake Mojave about ten years ago, the level of the water table in that whole area has raised considerably. Oh, I see. The Midas Touch was in a low spot, and parts of it were dug pretty deep. So now, with seepage from the lake feeding it, the lower level filled up with water. Yeah. Well, now, Jake... Simmer down, Johnny. I'm getting to it. Hard luck Dennis needed money. A lot of money. So who should he come to but the Haskell brothers? Three of my best clients. So what happened? I hate to keep chewing your ear off this way, but I've got to give you some background. Shoot. Ernie, Kevin, and George Haskell, they're money men from back east. What do you mean, money men? Oh, brokers. You know, stock market. Oh. Well, they made themselves a big pile of dough, got the usual ulcers doing it, and then decided to give up and get as far away from New York as possible. I don't blame them, but about but this... But when they got out here, instead of just retiring and taking it easy... You know, much as you might like it at first, you can get pretty bored just riding around on horseback and hunting and fishing all the time. Get tired of fishing? Huh? Uh, nothing. Go on. Yeah, well, after a few months, they decided they'd have to have something to do with themselves, or at least something to occupy their minds, so they bought up the old Too Lazy Two ranch. Cattle? 80,000 acres north of Easton here, not very good grazing land, but enough to keep two, three hundred head of beef alive, and... With Alex Bundy as their foreman, they did all right. Well, uh, now let's get down to... Gentlemen uh... ranchers, they called themselves, and that's just about what it amounted to. They built a nice house on the property, settled in it, and, well, not much work, but just enough worry and responsibility so that time didn't hang too heavy on the hands. Now. Now? Now. All their insurance is with my company. The straight life, that is. 500000 apiece. And you're afraid something's going to... Yes, sir, gonna... half a million each and double indemnity. Wow. A million apiece in case of death by accident. Right. Accident. So, let's get back to hard luck Dennis. Well, that part's easy, isn't it? Is it? Sure. Dennis needs money to open his mine. The Haskell boys are obviously loaded. Right. 
First off, even before he got his lease, he tried to sweet-talk him into putting up some money, but after years of fooling around with those bulls and bears in Wall Street, they were too smart for that. So we took him down in the mine, let him chip off some samples of ore, and had him take it themselves down at the assay office. And was that the ore that you said tested so high? Yes, sir. And from the minute they saw the report on it, you couldn't have held him back with a 20-mule team. How much did they go in for? 20000 apiece, cash, on the strength of a handwritten agreement with Hard Luck Dennis that they'd get 30% of whatever came out of the mine. Okay, Jake, now let's get down to business. Are you afraid that something connected with this Midas Touch Mine and Hard Luck Dennis has put the Haskell brothers in jeopardy? I'm afraid it's got beyond that, Johnny. Huh? Three days ago, Hard Luck took the Haskells over to the mine again for another look. Yeah? Cave in. They finished digging their bodies out yesterday morning. All three of them. Hard Luck Dennis? He wasn't caught in that cave in. Where is he? Who knows? Hmm. Then for you, it's a question of a $3 million payoff on the policies or a million and a half. Yep, Johnny. A question of accident or murder. Then for me, it's a matter of finding a killer. Yeah. Named Hard Luck Dennis. And when you do, look out for him. Yeah. Tell me, Jake, does anybody know I've come here to look into this? Oh, the whole town, I'm afraid. Uh, Maybe I should have kept it quiet. Well, sometimes it is better if... uh... Where are the policies? Oh, uh, uh, here, I'll I'll get them for you. They're right in this little side office. Who are the beneficiaries? There's only one. The girl that is, or that was, married to Kevin Haskell. The other two are bachelors. She lives at the ranch. She filed a claim yet? No. Has, uh... Well, can you make the coroner's reports available to me? Anytime you want. Here, I'll take it for you. Johnny Dollar. I mean, this is the office Dollar, of... you're the one I want to talk to. Huh? I want to talk to you. I want you to meet me alone. Oh, who are you? Tell you where and when in a second. And don't come carrying a gun, because, mister, I can outdraw you two to one. Who is this? They call me Hardlock Dennis. <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, I find that one of the fishermen who hangs around Lake Mojave is a character called Death. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. I mean, this is the office of Jake. Dollar. You're the one I want to talk 
Huh? You heard me. I want you to meet me alone. Oh, who are you? Tell you when and where in a second. And don't come carrying a gun, because, mister, I can outdraw you two to one. Who is this? They call me Hard Luck Dennis. Oh, you planning to add another murder to that of the Haskell brothers? Thirteen miles out of Kingman on the highway east. Little side road to the right, Mark Yucca Trail. Now listen. Mile and a quarter on, you'll see an old miner shack. Be there at three o'clock sharp. And what if I decide to... I told you. Bring somebody with you or try anything funny and you'll never get out of this desert alive. Hello. Hmm. Uh, that call for me, Johnny? No. No, it wasn't, Jake. Hmm? But I wonder why a killer would call me. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Kingman, Arizona, to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company. Following is a report of expenditures during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Jake Kessler, local representative for Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability, had laid it out pretty clearly. The three Haskell brothers, prosperous gentlemen ranchers, had taken out life policies totaling a million and a half dollars double indemnity which meant that their death in what was supposed to look like an accident at the bottom of the Midas Touch Mine could cost Southwest a cool three million. And the finger of suspicion pointed straight at one hard luck Dennis, prospector and promoter. It was in Jake Kessler's office that I'd received the phone call from hard luck. Where did hard luck tell you to meet him, Johnny? Oh, uh, I'll find it all right. Where? Look, uh, I think I'd better handle this alone, Jake. Uh, Johnny... He's being hunted by every available policeman here in Kingman. He's a killer. Like I told you, he got 20000 apiece from the Haskell brothers' cash. Then took him down to the Midas Touch and caved it in on him. All right, even supposing that he did. Why would he do it? Well, daggone it, that's as obvious as those two heads you're wearing. The mine is worthless. How do you know? Because smarter people than him gave it up over 20 years ago. I thought you told me the ore samples he brought out are say at $1,100 a ton. Oh, now, look, Johnny, you know as well as I do that there's more ways to salt a gold mine than there is to skin a cat. You have any proof that hard luck salted that one? No, but Tad Harding will. Who? Oh. Captain Tad Harding, please. He hasn't lived out in this country all his life for nothing. Where's Harding now? At the Midas Touch. But when he gets back here, you see him. He'll show you that I'm right. Well, if you are, it certainly would point the finger at hard luck Dennis, wouldn't it? Can't you understand, Johnny? Hard luck needed money. He's always needed money. He sold at that mine, got 60000 from the Haskells on a lick and a promise, then caved in the mine on them before they could get wise to him. Good theory. You'll find it's a fact. That's why he skipped out as soon as he... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't have skipped very far, could he? And if he were guilty, why would he want to see me? Yeah, all right, Johnny. Now listen to me. The Haskells were three of our finest citizens. So the whole town will cooperate with you. So don't do anything foolish like meeting that hard luck Dennis alone. That willingness to cooperate includes you, Jake? You know it does. I'll do anything. All right, then just give me your word. You won't tell anyone that I'm meeting hard luck. Well, now, Because wait if a you minute. do, I'll drop this case like a hot potato. Yeah. Well... Okay, Johnny, for the time being. Okay. I uh, just noticed out the window. Tad Harding's car just pulled up in front of police headquarters. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Captain Tad Harding turned out to be a tall, well-built, cool-headed man of about 40 who impressed me as being able to cope with any situation that might arise. He bore out everything Jake Kessler had told me about the Haskells and about hard luck. And he added two new and very important bits of information. One, that he'd found nothing whatsoever to indicate that the Midas touch had been salted. On the contrary, he'd picked up some very rich chunks of ore. Two, he'd learned the probable cause of the cave-in and what it meant. I told you it was murder, Johnny. I told you. Tad Harding had found a length of wire rope, one end wrapped around the spool of a powerful hand winch. The other end had very obviously been tied around a pillar. 
A thick pillar of rock and gravel that had been dug around so as to leave support for the ceiling of a horizontal shaft. Jake and I walked back to his office. That's it, Johnny. No doubt about it. No doubt. A few quick turns of the handle on that winch, the pillar came down and the roof caved in. I'll have to admit it certainly looks that way. Well, at least the company's off the hook for a million and a half of the insurance. If we can prove that somebody operated that winch while the Haskells were down there. Now, now, look, And Johnny, that means I... finding that person. I'm satisfied it was murder. Would the courts be? The courts. Sure. When the claims on these policies are filed, they'll be for three million on the basis of double indemnity for accidental deaths. You can bet your last penny on that. Claims haven't been filed yet, have they? Oh, no. Well, I hope we'll have time before they are. Time? To prove it was murder by producing the murderer. You, uh, you still plan to see and talk to hard luck, Dennis? Yep. Alone? Yep. When? Sometime soon. When, Johnny? Tell you all about it after I've seen him. Johnny, it's dangerous. Say, uh, look, if I'm going to stay at that place you told me about over at Lake Mojave, I may as well go and get settled, huh? How do I get there? I'll drive you over, Johnny. No point in that. I've got my rented car. Well, you'll probably want to be seeing the mine, too. Maybe I can be of help to you. Or maybe you just want to be present if I happen to keep a date with hard luck tennis. Now, I didn't say that. You didn't need to. Jake, I want you to stay right here in Kingman so you can keep in touch with whatever the police dig up and still be in touch with me. There's a phone at the Lake Mojave Resort, isn't there? Well, sure, Johnny. Also, but I don't did. forget that three million dollar claim may be filed here at your office any minute. If so, I want to know about it. Now, how do I get to Lake Mojave? Head east on Highway 6080, he said. So I did. And 13 miles out of town, I found the little side road, Yucca Trail, that Hard Luck had described over the phone. The next mile and a quarter was about the worst driving I ever encountered. This was nothing but an old wagon trail. Several times, the crankcase and rear axle scraped on boulders in the middle of it. The trail had dropped off sharply from the highway, and as far as I could see, there was nothing but sun-baked rock and gravel of the Mojave Desert, splotched here and there with withered sagebrush, tumbleweed, some weirdly shaped Joshua trees, an occasional yucca plant with its stalk poking upward like a huge candle, and too many kinds of cactus to mention. All of it surrounded by bleak needles and crags of rock by high plateaus and mesas. The going got so bad, I'd almost decided to get out and walk when I spotted the old miner shack that Hardluck had named as our meeting place. As I approached it, I could see no sign of life around it. Hello? Anybody here? Hardluck, Dennis? Hello? Nothing. No one. No sign of life at all, huh? The sudden movement at the corner of the shack was nothing but an ancient desert turtle plodding at what he probably thought was breakneck speed toward a shady spot under a sagebrush. Hello! Hi, Luck! Anyone inside there? Back of this shack right. Go and reach raising, mister. Hard luck. Dollar? Yes. Yeah. You come alone, like I said? I don't see anybody else around. Then real stare, Dollar. Don't move. No gun. That's smart. Sit down there on that bench. Sure. Now, what's this all about, Hard Luck? I didn't do it. That's what it's all about. I didn't do it. I didn't kill the Askell boys. You understand that? I didn't think you did. No. Why not? Because if you had, I think you would have skipped the country. You wouldn't have asked me to come here and talk to you. That's right. That's right, Dollar. Oh, you just trying to soften me up. Not much point in that, is there, with you holding a gun on me? If you didn't do it, hard luck, why don't you go to the police in Kingman and tell them that? I wouldn't have a chance. Judge or jury, anything else. The whole town's against me. 
They made up their mind I did it so the best lawyer in the country couldn't save me. Apparently the whole town thought a lot of the Haskell brothers. Surely they had fine men. That's why I picked them to share the mine with me. The only reason you picked them was because they had money and you know it. Yeah, like all the rest. Didn't you see the ore they took out of the Midas Touch? I heard about it. Yeah, rich, rich ore. Twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a ton. And I didn't plant it there. It's been there all the time. Even Captain Harden couldn't find where I sorted it because I didn't. Oh, you know that he was out there. Sure I do. I know everything that goes on in this desert. All right, then, look. Suppose you put down that gun and tell me what happened the day the mine caved in on the Haskell. You bet I'll tell you. That's why I called you. But I won't put down this gun until I'm sure you're on my side. Well, then, wave it in some other direction. You want to hear what I got to say? Then sit still and listen to me. First, tell me this. Was it murder? It was murder. Then who... But not by my hand. Then who did it? Do you know? Yes, yes, I know. Who? Uh, they wanted to see the mine again, get some more samples. That was last Friday. The day of the cave Yes. Yeah. So I took them down there, gave them a pick, showed them where to chip it off, down on the second level. Go on. But then I left them there for a minute. Why? I heard a car. Heard a car pull up, so I went back out. Went back to see who it was. There wasn't supposed to be anybody around that mine. I had it posted. But I'd heard this car pulling up. Well, go on, go on. So I left the Haskells below and went you on. You said that. I, in a hurry, I went. No time for my eyes to get used to the bright sunlight outside. All I saw was the car. When I stuck my head out, that's when it hit me. What do you mean? When what hit you? A rock, a club, or something. I, and it knocked me out. When I come to, the cave-in was all over. The Haskells were dead in there. And I knew what everybody would think, so I lit out, stayed in the desert. Well, do you know who it was who hit you? Sure, by the car. Who? The same one that made the cave-in. Who? Dollar. It was... Listen... There's somebody coming out there. You cheated me. You brought him. No, no, I did not. Hard luck. Get away from the door. Get... Hard luck. Hard luck. Yeah, I guess they named you right. <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the so-called trackless desert yields a set of tracks that lead straight to... But if I told you, you'd know, wouldn't you? So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... 
Johnny Dollar. Jake Kessler returning your call, Johnny. I just got back here to my office. You've been at the hospital? Yes, and it looks like hard luck Dennis may pull through. Has he been able to talk? He may never be able to. That bullet went right through his neck. Anyhow, he's still unconscious. He's the key to the whole case, Jake, so phone me here as soon as he can be talked to. Meantime? Meantime, I'm going to try to snag me some of these Lake Mojave bass. Lucky dog. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Katherine Wash on the Colorado River to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is a report of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. <laughs> Item 8, $6.20 gas for the rental car that I drove down here to the Lake Mojave Resort in the Colorado River just above Davis Dam. And what a place. Modern, comfortable cabin within spitting distance of the lake itself. Good restaurant, tackle shop, dock. In fact, everything to make a fisherman happy and to help him fight it out with the lunker bass that inhabit the 60-mile-long lake. But much as I wanted to fish, I had other things to do. First, I wanted a good look at the Midas Touch Mine. On the advice of the manager, Ham Pratt, I took along Buster Favor, general factotum of the resort. I liked Buster immediately. Short, stocky, cheerful, and with keen eyes that took in everything that went on about him. Little side road to the left, Johnny. Okay, so old hard luck Dennis got shot up, huh? Yeah, apparently because he knew too much. You see, when that cave-in occurred at the Midas Touch and killed the Haskell brothers... Hey, you, uh, you better go into second gear on this road. Okay, right. Why, hard luck was the only person known to have been there with him. Couple that with the fact he just got 60,000 bucks from them to reopen the mine. Well, that mine's worthless, Johnny. Yeah, so I understand. Anyhow, naturally enough, everybody decided hard luck had done it. You know, before the brothers could get wise to him. He's a funny old character. Pretty nervous when I saw him. He almost took a shot at me a couple of times when he didn't like something I said. But instead, he got it. Yeah. Well, he was just prospecting. He was all right. Managed to get enough out of the ground here and there to live on. Some left over for a Saturday night binge down in. Hey, you see the workings up ahead? Right. But when he couldn't seem to make a big strike like every prospector tries for... That's well, when he tried finding suckers for some of his fancy promotions, huh? Yeah. But he really wasn't very good at it. He threw him out of the Texas oil country, you know. Yeah, so I heard. Well, so that's the Midas touch. Not too many of this kind of mine anymore with the entrance going into the hillside this way. You know, I better use this flashlight. Okay. Hey, tell me something, Buster. If this mine is worthless, how could hard luck get the Haskell brothers to chip off chunks of ore that assayed over $1,000 a ton? Well, I got kind of a theory about that. Let's see if I'm right. Everything's so covered up with dust down here. Not having been worked for years, it ought to be easy to see where they knocked off chips for samples to take back... Well, 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 what are you doing down here? Holy smoke, that's a rattler. Yeah. Guess he decided to get in out of the hot sun out there. Well, here, I'll find a big rock or something. No, no, you just wait. Handle to this old pick here. If I can get him to strike at it, maybe I can grab him by the tail and... Watch it! And crack him like a whip! Oh, so help me, Buster. Sometimes you do it right, you can snap their heads right off. Got to be careful, though, not to snap that head against your own self. Oh, brother. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. No chance of somebody having planted that snake down here, is there? You mean like the scorpion in the monument? Huh? You know, those little neat piles of rock you see here, there in the desert, two, three feet high. I thought those were where some prospector had staked a claim. Markers. Yeah, they are. Monuments, they call them. In the old days, they always did it the same way. How is that? Well, I'd pull a couple of stones away, you'd find the old Prince Albert tobacco tin. You open the tin, you'd find two things in it. A piece of paper describing and marking off the claim, and a scorpion. Alive? As long as he stayed alive. 
That meant stay away. No trespassing. This is mine. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Now, look here. Here, Johnny, on this pillar. That was the pillar that was left by digging around it to hold up the ceiling. Oh? You see where some of it was knocked off with a pick? Yeah, I... Hey, wait a minute, Buster. That looks like yellow... That looks like gold. That's what it is. Then this mine is rich. No, Johnny. Well, you mean the only gold ore left down here is in these pillars? That's right. And without them, the roof would cave in. Well, couldn't it... Couldn't it be shored up with wood? Why? Only two, three, four of these left down here. Probably not more than a ton in all. Not worth it. Oh, yeah, I see. But worth using it to bring in the suckers. Yeah. Well, now you want to see how the cave in on the Haskell. Now, what in the Sam Hill is this doing down here? This winch and length of wire rope. Isn't that the answer to the cave in? Ted Harding over at headquarters in Kingman seemed to think so. Yeah, sure. Somebody used it to pull down one of the pillars. But Johnny, a winch of this type hasn't got any place in the mine. Where would a rig like this be used? Well, every ranch in this whole area probably has a couple. Cattle ranch? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. That gives me an idea. About who did it? At least it gives me a lead to an idea. Or at least the kind of questions to ask hard luck Dennis. Well, I thought you said he was still unconscious. Yeah, yeah, so I'll have to wait. Well, let's get out of here. What do you plan to do now? Oh, just wait, I guess. And do some fishing while I wait. Oh, now that's right down my alley. Only first I'm going to knock off a bit of this ore for a souvenir. Yeah, this old pick ought to do. Well, now take it easy, John. I, I said take it easy. Oh. Now, Johnny, you should know him better than that. Here, let me help you out of this pile of rubble. My face was pretty red as we drove back to Lake Mojave. Only once did Buster mention the full thing I'd done. Yes, sir, if you'd banged away at one of the pillars further in the shaft, we'd have been in real trouble. Probably ended up like the Haskell brothers. And I suppose instead of planning on going fishing, I should have been cooking up some new angle of attack on this case. But after all, I had been promised fishing time on this trip. And until hard luck Dennis could recover enough to talk. I got the boat all ready and waiting for us, Johnny, with a 30-horse Johnson outboard on it. Oh, boy, I can't wait. And I'll take you to spots I know where you can pull out the biggest fightingest bass you ever saw. Oh, Buster, you son of a gun, you're tempting me with something I can't resist. I'll even loan you my bottle of Fast Strike. Fast Strike? Yeah, lure oil. A little dab of that on your bait will guarantee you fish. That's for me. Uh, you, um... You sure you wouldn't rather just sit and try to figure out some new lead on this insurance case? You want my answer? Here. But as luck would have it, Ham Pratt was standing down by the dock waiting for us with a message for me. Call Kingman Operator Number 37. I made the call. This is Jake Kessler, Johnny. How's the fishing? Well, if it wasn't for the message from you, I'd be out on Lake Mojave right now. So if that's all you want to know... Johnny. I'm... Yeah? I put in this call to you over two hours ago, when Hard Luck Dennis first came to. He has? Yes. The doc says he's going to be okay. Has he told you anything about who shot him up? No. He won't talk to anybody but you. Says you're his only friend. Okay, Jake. I'm on my way. <laughs> In a half-hour flat, I was back in Kingman at the Mercy Hospital on the edge of town. Hello, Hardluck. Johnny. Johnny Dollar. That's right. Glad. Glad you came. Only one I trust. Not like people around town. They hate me. Wow. Knew he'd try to get me, Johnny. Who? Probably seen me going back to the mine. Knew I'd recognize that winch he left there. The winch that was used to pull down the mine pillar caused the cave-in? That's right. A lot of winches like that on the ranches. But only Alex. Only he used that particular make. Royal standard. Alex who, Hardluck? Bundy. Alex Bundy. Alex Bundy. Foreman at the Haskell's ranch? The Too Lazy too? Yes, Alex. But Why? In love, Kevin Haskell's wife, Dora. Okay. Okay. Would you tell the police, the court, all this when the time comes? If you say so. 
If I live. Oh, you'll live all right. The doctor says you're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Now, is there anything you want? Anything I can have sent up here to make you more comfortable? No, thanks, Johnny. Just come and see me, will you? Sure. Thanks. Uh, I guess you're the only real friend I have. Just why he felt that way, I don't know. Perhaps it was because he needed a friend. I decided I'd better let Jake Kessler in on what I'd learned and incidentally ask him for directions to the two lazy two, so I drove on over to his little second floor office on East Palm Drive. Alex Bundy, huh? Yeah, that's what Hardluck says. And with his testimony to back me up when I find Alex, you'll, well, we'll have a case, a good case. Which means, by the way, that your company won't have to pay off an additional million and a half for double... What's the matter? Shh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, Jake, um, I'm going on over and do a bit of fishing in Lake Mojave. What under the sun? Buster you... Favor promises to get me a limit of the finest bass you... What is it, Johnny? What are you doing? Somebody was outside that door listening to us. I'm sure of it. Well, who... Here, look, there he is going down the street. Recognize him, Jake? Where, Johnny? Ah, Where? It's too late. He got around the corner. But if it's who I think it is, yeah, he must have heard all that was said in here. Alex Bundy, huh? What's your guess? I've been thinking, Johnny. Yeah? Old hard luck Dennis has been the key to this whole case right from the first. He still is, more than ever after what he told me. All right, then. I. Uh, excuse me. Jake Kessler speaking. Oh, hello, Chief. I was just... Huh? What? Oh. What's the matter, Jake? What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. I was Tad Harding at headquarters. The fire escape outside the room at the hospital. Huh? Somebody climbed up the fire escape, used a bailing hook. Oh. Yeah. He's dead now. Hard luck. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the case is closed. And then it suddenly reopens with a bang from a .30-06 rifle. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Good. I was hoping you'd be there at Jake Kessler's office. This is Buster Favor at Lake Mojave Resort. Oh, hi. Find out anything? Yeah. Hard luck, Dennis. Our one real key to this $3 million case has just been murdered. Oh. You know who did it? 
I have an idea. Well, I found something here that might help you. Oh? Tire tracks at the old miner's shack where hard luck was shot. But more of the same tire tracks here at the resort. What's there? I'm on my way. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Lake Mojave Resort on the Colorado River in Arizona to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company. Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Mm -hmm. Item 9, 6.30, a stop at the sign of the Flying Red Horse for gas for my rented car to get me from Kingman, Arizona to Lake Mojave Resort. About a mile short of the lake on the winding road that led in from the main highway, I found Buster waiting in a spot where an old wagon trail cut off to the right. Right over here, Johnny. Clear as crystal. Hiya, Buster. You see him here? These tire tracks in the sand? Ah. Well, uh... Oh, yeah, sure. You see? Three of the tires. Look here, where the car turned to get around this rock. Yeah, yeah. Three of the tires were pretty good. It had those big knobby treads. But this one, right front, almost worn smooth. Or is it the left rear? Oh, it's right front, Johnny. Car was going north, out into the desert. Huh? Tell by the little skid on this turn. <laughs> Plus, do you read tire tracks like some people can read footprints? Oh, that's just practice. Anyway, these are the same tracks that I found by the old shack where you met hard luck and he got shot at. Then let's get into my car and follow these up. Oh, whoa, Johnny. Nothing but a jeep could get over this trail. Well, where does this trail pick up a highway again? It doesn't. Winds around for eight or ten miles and ends up in the lake, over by the southwest corner of the fence line on the Two Lazy Two Range. Then our best bet is to drive over to the Two Lazy Two. Except for one thing. The jeep we're looking for is somewhere up that trail, so we'll go by outboard. Oh, What? This old trail worms around all right, but always close along the edge of Lake Mojave all the way. And the end of its eight miles of winding is only about one mile by water from our dock at the resort. Uh Uh-huh. Then we ought to be able to intercept whoever's in that jeep. That's right. Then let's go. Lake Mojave was clear and calm and beautiful. Perfect for fishing. But we had other things on our minds as the 30-horse outboard pushed our 14-foot aluminum boat along at better than 25 miles an hour. We stayed fairly close to the Arizona side. Look, Johnny. See that streak of dust along the shore? Yeah. Somebody's been driving along there, all right. Still is. Won't be able to see who, though, until he comes out from behind that ridge of hills over there. Hey, that streak of dust hasn't grown any longer. Looks like he stopped. Could be. I'll head us in towards shore. No, I still don't understand why he'd be driving out on that dead-end trail, though, unless he wants to dump a body or something in the lake. Now, that's a morbid thought. All right, but if it is a killer you're looking for... You said that trail ends at a corner of... Hey, wait a minute, Buster. Yeah? If it's who I think it is, he overheard me tell Jake Kessler I plan to go fishing out here today. So? What was that? The motor giving you trouble? What was what? There. Hear it? Yeah, I heard it, but it wasn't the motor. Hey, that's funny. Buster, look, we're taking in water, those holes in the bottom. Here, you take this can and start bailing. Right. I would drill a lot of holes. No, wait a minute, look at them close. They're bullet holes. Holy smoke, you're right. Hey, that was a shot. Came from over on shore. I saw the puff of smoke over in that patch of sagebrush. Come on, let's get out of here. Swerve us around, Buster. We've been a pair of sitting ducks. Man, you are right. Keep on bailing and keep your head down. Swing us around that little point there and we'll be out of range. Wow. You see that spread of water beside us? That guy can shoot. You aren't kidding. Okay, Buster, you can ease her up now. We're out of his line. Yeah. Well, I guess we pulled a boner, Johnny. Why not having somebody posted on that road while we came out here? Uh-huh. Now he can climb back in his jeep and... There, there, you see? Trail of dust again. Going back toward the highway. I see it. If we hadn't taken on so much water, we might be able to get back and intercept him on the highway, but it's too late now. Well, at least we know what to look for. What? The jeep that made those tracks. Whoa. 
Well, isn't that kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack out in this country? Buster, I think I know exactly where to look. I believe I must have bailed a good five gallons of water out of that boat by the time we reached the dock. Then Buster insisted on going along as I headed back up the highway toward Kingman. We stopped where the old trail cut in only long enough to see if the jeep tracks had come back on the highway. They had. Now that we're on the way, Johnny, where are we going? Any of these ranches out here use jeeps, Buster? Most all the big ones, but... Including the two lazy two? Yeah, that's right. Now, wait a minute. I didn't ask you who you thought was shooting at us out there on the lake. Who you thought overheard you talking about going fishing. I figured if you wanted to tell me, you would. Oh, the trouble is I still can't prove anything. All right. Now, let me tell you who can shoot like that and with that kind of a gun. It was a thirty yard six. You could tell by the sound? Thirty yard six with a long barrel. That could mean it had a scope sight. Almost have to for that kind of shooting. Alex Bundy. Foreman at the Two Lazy Two. That's who hard luck Dennis said shot at him. And it ties up, Johnny. Does it? You got a few too many under his belt one night at a dance party in Kingman. Yeah. Started yapping his head off about how a lot of soft living millionaires from back east could come out here and own the place while he had to do all the work. It wasn't fair. Worm a turn sometime, even if he had to help a turn, and he'd be the one who counted the money. That's about the time he, everybody started talking about him and Dora. Dora? Wife of one of the Haskell brothers who was killed on the mine. Oh. Kevin Haskell. Go on, Buster. Seems Alex and Dora were seen a lot of each other on the sly. Everybody kind of stood around waiting to see if Alex was trying to get some control of the ranch that way. That's Union Pass right ahead. Hmm? Just over the tops of the road to the left, shortcut to the Too Lazy Two. Oh. That's where you want to go, isn't it? Yeah, Buster, that's where I want to go. It was only a couple of miles in to the ranch's fence line, but a good three miles further to the main house and its cluster of outbuildings. Buster's sharp eyes first noticed the jeep parked by the side of what looked like a big tool shed, and I drove slowly past it. Slowly enough so that he could study its tires and the tracks on the dusty ground. Uh-huh. Well? That's the one, all right. Then keep an eye out for Alex and that gun of his. Yeah, and be ready to duck. Try the main house. Okay. You know, I got a kind of funny feeling now that we're here, we should have brought a posse along. Afraid it's too late for that now. That is a gun bulging under your jacket, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But I'm wondering what chance a little thirty-eight lemon squeezer has against a high-powered rifle. Oh, well, come on. Keep your eyes peeled. Johnny, I'm beginning to feel like I'm right in the middle of an old-time Western movie. Maybe you are, Buster. Maybe you are. Why, Buster? Oh, uh, how are you, Dora? <laughs> Don't just stand there. Yes, ma'am. The woman standing on the porch of the old house looks strangely out of place on this big Western desert ranch. Perhaps it was because of her clothes, two-toned sports shoes, and a crisp, well-tailored white linen dress that served to accent the lines of a trim athletic figure and go perfectly with her short, boyish cut hair. Uh, Ms. Haskell, this is Mr. Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Jack Kessler told me you were here. Come in, please. Okay, thank you. I suppose he told you why I'm here. No, leave the door open for the breeze. Oh, he said to investigate the death of my husband, Kevin, and his brothers in that mine accident. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Do you think it was an accident? According to Mr. Kessler, you don't. Why? Because it means his company would have to pay only a million and a half to me instead of three million? Somebody found pretty concrete evidence there in the mine that one of the rock pillars supporting the roof had been deliberately pulled down. Hard luck, Dennis. If what you say is true, he must have done it. It was hard luck who told me about it, who showed me the winch that was used to do it. And that winch, Mrs. Haskell, could have come from only one place around here. This ranch. Oh, no. You mean, no, you can't mean that somebody here at the ranch did it. Kind of looks that way, doesn't it? But who? That's what I hoped you might be able to tell me. Who beside you could profit by the death of your husband and his brothers? Who here at the ranch? Alex Bundy, perhaps? Alex, how? By marrying into the family... What are you talking about? That is, of course, if one of the Haskell brothers were to die. Kevin, perhaps. That's absurd. Oh? I had a notion that you and Alex were somewhat interested in each other. Well, you're wrong. He may have been interested in me. 
He was, as a matter of fact. He made it very difficult for me. How do you mean that? He kept trying to force his attentions on me. And you didn't reciprocate? Of course not, because... Well, go on. Because I knew what his real motives were. All right, go on. This ranch. This ranch is what he wanted. He knew that Kevin wasn't well. But that's why Kevin had come out here with his brothers in the first place. I did hear that he was having a little trouble with his lungs, Johnny. He didn't have long to live. Not many years, that is. Even in this hot, dry air. So Alex did it. Well, it sure looks that way, doesn't it, Johnny? What what led you to look for him here? It was Alex Bundy who shot up hard luck Dennis. Then somebody overheard me say I was going fishing down at the lake. That's where I was shot at, by somebody who was not only a crack shot, but more important, was driving the jeep that's parked outside. The jeep was gone from here this afternoon. Do you know where Alex Bundy is now? Well, he must be somewhere around the ranch. And you must get him, Mr. Dollar. I'll help you. I'll help you find him. But don't go unarmed. Here, I'll give you one of my rifles. Hey, that collection of high-powered rifles is yours? Yes, at a national rifle team in college here. I'll give you ammunition. And, Buster, you take one. This thirty thirty. No, I, I don't know, Mrs. Take Best... it. What Mr. Dollar says about him is true. Alex may try to shoot before you... Mr. Dollar. Laura! Mr. Dollar, be ready when he comes in. Laura, why don't you tell me you were through with the jeep? You know I wanted to use it this afternoon. Dora? Well, well. Don't move, Mr. Dollar. Your gun isn't loaded. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, well, sometimes justice is done by strange and devious means. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar, answer it. Answer it! Johnny Dollar. Hello, Johnny. This is Jake Kessler. Be careful what you say. Uh, Johnny, what are you doing out there at the Too Lazy 2? Johnny! Talk to him, but be careful. Don't forget this gun. Why, uh, Jake, uh, what's on your mind? Three million dollars of insurance. 
Dora Haskell's filed a claim on the basis of accidental death. So unless you can come up pretty quick with proof the Haskell brothers were murdered... Jake, I have a funny feeling I'm looking at that proof right now. You mean there at the ranch? You still haven't told me what you're doing out there. Why, uh... Why don't you come out here and see, Jake? What? You fool, I told you to watch what you say. What are you talking about, Johnny? Tell her I'll pull this trigger so fast. You try that door and Jake will hear it over this phone and come out here anyway. What? Uh, Hello? You heard that? Hang up, hang up. Hello? Here, hang it up yourself. Oh, no, you... Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location near Kingman, Arizona... Attention, Mr. Jake Kessler, Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Proof that the Haskell brothers were murdered rather than killed accidentally in the cave-in at the Midas Touch mine could save Greater Southwest a cool million and a half dollars. But the one man who could have given me that proof was murdered himself. Thanks to Buster Favor at the Lake Mojave Resort who could read a set of tire tracks like you and I read a newspaper... I was able to trace the killer's car to the Too Lazy Too Ranch. And there, the evidence all pointed to the foreman, Alex Bundy. However, when Alex appeared at the ranch house, he also put the finger on Dora Haskell. That's when your phone call came in, Jake. And that's when... Oh, no, you don't get it! Thanks, Buster. Yeah, well, I kind of hate to hit a woman that way, but she wouldn't have missed with that rifle. Matter of fact, she didn't. She creased your arm there just a Oh, forget it. First of all, let's take this gun off. Don't touch it. Oh, that's right, Alex. Kind of forgot about you. Now, why don't you put that thing down before you make the same mistake she almost did? It won't be a mistake, Dollar. Now, look, Alex. Shut up, Buster. You should have known better than to mess around this whole thing. Maybe you're the one who should have known better, Alex. According to Dora here a few minutes ago... I heard her. I heard from outside the window. Heard all of it. And she lied. Uh, Keep an eye on her, Buster. Yeah, sure. Just stay where you are. Stay stay away from that gun of hers, too. Look, Alex, why don't you just calm down? She we'll... lied. She was the one who shot at you down at the lake, not me. But it was you who shot up old hard luck Dennis when he tried to talk to me. Sure. Sure I did. I had to. He was going to tell you it was me that caved in the Midas touch on the Haskell brothers. He did tell me. Sure, he was going to tell you. I know he was. And I had to stop him. Wouldn't you have stopped a man who was trying to put a noose around your neck? Will you listen to me? That's why I had to kill him there at the hospital when he was well enough to talk some more. He would have put the finger on me. I tell you, he already had put the finger. Sure he would. I know he would. And I had to stop him. But it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault, Dollar. She was lying to you. I heard her outside. I heard. She was trying to lay it all on me, but she's the one, not me. In spite of your murder of hard luck. I had to, don't you understand me? I had to. Look, why don't you put down that gun and listen? She's the one all the way from the start. I'm not dumb, Dollar, but she was smarter than me, and she kept getting me in deeper and deeper. I'm a good ranch foreman, Dollar. See for yourself what I've done for the Too Lazy Two. But this kind of thing I don't know about. So she got me in deeper and deeper right from the start. Just how did it start, Alex? I'll tell you. I'll tell you how it started. I got drunk one night over in Kingman. So I heard. Made a lot of foolish talk about wanting the Too Lazy Two for myself. Any foreman wants to have a big ranch of his own. Any of them, ask him. You ask him. Isn't that true, Buster? You know. Alex, give me that. No, no, stay back. You stay back. I want him to know. I want him to know everything. She heard about what I'd said, understand? Then she came to me, sweet-talked me. Said I could own the Lazy Two. Along with her. Made it sound so wonderful, just me and her. But then when she started plotting how to get rid of her husband... Well, she thought he was going to die when he, when he came out here, but he didn't, see? So she started plotting how to get rid of him. And I was I was scared about that. But she told me I, I was already in it on account of I knew about it. So I better help her. So what else could I do? And all the time she kept me thinking how, how wonderful it would be just me and her. D- do you know what that means to a man, Mr. Dollar? Well, I can guess. So I helped her with the boat. You know the time, Buster. You mean when the Haskell sank during the windstorm out on the lake? Yeah, yeah, because I fixed the boat. I took out the flotation tanks and weakened the transom. So any kind of strain it would sink, and it did. Brother, you're in so deep. But you went after him. You saved him, didn't you, Buster? Yeah, I guess I did. So but then I wasn't too deep, you see? You understand? Yeah, Alex, I understand. And I'm afraid that you're... But she thought of the mine. 
She made me tell old Hard Luck to take him out to the Midas Touch because he thought there was still gold in it. Johnny, did Hard Luck tell you the door got him started on that pig? No, Nobody would have. That's why I had to kill him. Because he would have blamed her. And then she would have blamed me the way she did you just now. Don't you see? All she was doing was using me. You didn't come out here looking for her. You were looking for me, weren't you? Yeah, Alex, I guess we were. And if there'd been a fight, if I tried to gun you down, she would have killed me. Then she would have been in the clear, don't you see? She would have killed me the way she made me kill hard luck. It took you a long, long time to realize it, didn't it, Alex? There were a lot of things you didn't realize. But what's done is done, and you can't ever change it. You're in so deep, there's no way out for you now. And you know it, Alex. But you're not going to make things any easier for yourself. No, 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 get back, get back, I tell you. I'm in so deep, I can't get in any deeper. That's what you really mean, isn't it? So my only chance is to kill you and try to get away with it. Alex, now, listen, boy. But before I try it, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her but because of what she's done to Wait, me. Listen, you crazy, mixed-up guy. Sure. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I've been crazy all along, but I'm going to kill her. You hear me? I'm going to kill her now. Oh, no, you're not... Daughter, have her gun, Buster. Well, now, Johnny. Okay, Alex. Okay, you've done it. Added one more murder to your list. And I'm glad. I'm glad I did it. Then put that gun down and no, listen to me. I'm going. If you try to follow me, I'll kill you too. Come on, Johnny. I've got her gun. No good. It's jammed. That's why she couldn't pull it on him. She did? Yeah. Well, we can't just let him get away. Here, Buster. While I make a phone call, see if you can find a gun for yourself and some ammunition. You sure she's dead? Yes. Hello, operator. Couple of 38 handguns here, Johnny. And find some ammo. Operator. Operator, get me Kingman 19970 emergency. All set with his sidearms, Johnny. You want a rifle or do you... Jake, Alex Bundy has killed Dora Haskell and headed for parts unknown. Yeah, that's right. Call Ted Harding at headquarters. Have him put a roadblock on every highway leading from this ranch. Be sure there's a block at Davis Dam so he can't cross over into Nevada. Yes, that's right. He can phone him. By the time I hung up, Buster had my rented car started and waiting, so we took off on the main road leading from the ranch. We could still see the dust left by Alex Bundy in the Jeep. Could see that when he swung onto the highway, he'd turned right toward Lake Mojave. We saw no dust on any of the side roads, so we kept on going down toward Davis Dam, hoping that by the time he could get there, the roadblock would be set up. We'll be able to see you when we get to the top of this hill, Johnny. Good. Yeah, yeah, there. You see him? cars across the road over the dam. That means he will have seen them. And there's only one place he could go. Lake Mojave Resort. Right. The is just up ahead. All right, we'll take it on two wheels. Glad we aren't having to track them this time. Huh? Wind's coming up. You see the dust blowing off the mesas up the east? Yeah. End? When that east wind comes up, it comes up fast. All right, hang on. Here's our turn. Buster was right. By the time we got down to the dock at Lake Mojave, the wind was blowing a gale. The chief we'd been chasing was parked next to the tackle shop, and no sign of Alex Bundy. We learned the reason from Ham Pratt, general manager of the resort. Hey, Johnny, Buster, what's going on here? Plenty, Ham. Listen, Ham, did you see where Alex I... Bundy came down the road like a bat out of Hades a couple of minutes ago? Where'd he go? Jumped out of his Jeep, waving a rifle, tore down to the dock, and took off in his outboard runabout. Got a boat for us, Buster? Yeah, sure have. Come on. You want me along? No, two of us is better, Ham. We'll need all the speed we can get out on that lake. You're right. That boat of Alex's is the fastest one of the lot. Two dirty horsepower Johnson. Here we are. Climb in, Johnny. Cast us off, Ham. I shall. Fire up. Here we go. Boy, this wind is really coming up. Sure is. We're going to have us a rough ride. Where would he head? Cottonwood Landing, about 20 miles up. Or even Nelson's Landing, if he has enough gas. Either way, get over into Nevada. All I hope is he's having as rough a time of it as we are. Don't worry. He is. That boat of his is fast, but not as seaworthy as this. Hang on. I hear in the middle is where we'll really get this wind. And we did. And unlike salt water where the wind builds up long swells that you have a chance of riding over, this lake develops a chop. Waves only three or four feet high, but one on top of the other. With a less skillful hand than Buster's at the wheel, we would have swamped in a minute. As it was, we were both soaking wet and hanging on for dear life as the little outboard pounced and bounded along. Look, Johnny, dead ahead. Yeah, I see him. Hey, he's making an awful lot of speed. Too much speed for that hull of his in this kind of weather. 
You pound the bottom out of it. What do you think you're doing to this boat? Oh, this will hold together all right. It was a mad chase, a crazy one. And then I noticed that we were slowly but surely gaining on Alex. I knew he couldn't take it in that hull. See? He had to slow down. Gradually, the distance between us grew shorter. 200 yards, 100. At least he'd never be able to aim his rifle in a sea like this. At least until we got right on top of him. Keep your gun on him, Johnny. It's going to be rough trying to lash onto him in this chop. Okay. Why do you pull us alongside him? Then it happened. As we came up on him, Alex suddenly swung his boat straight in at us and gunned his two motors wide open. Hey, what's going on? That's really all there is to it. Oh, except that Ham Pratt, bless his heart, had followed us with an outboard cruiser and picked us up. Alex... Well, the shock of crashing into us must have wedged him into his boat. And with the bottom of it torn out, it sank like a rock, and he went along with it. Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford, 978.35. Remarks? There was no question, of course, but that the Haskell brothers had been murdered. No double indemnity. And Dora's little scheme to collect a cool three million? Well, it got her exactly what she deserved. Won't people like that ever learn? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, a quiet little New England town with elm-shaded streets, picket fences, flower beds, and a killer on the loose. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dow. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Johnny Jacobs, Herb Butterfield, Harley Bear, Barney Phillips, Shep Menken, and Roland Winters. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. quick turns of the handle on that winch, the pillar came down and the roof caved in. I'll have to admit it certainly looks that way. Well, at least the company's off the hook for a million and a half of the insurance. If we can prove that somebody operated that winch while the Haskells were down there. Now, now, look, And that means finding that person. I'm satisfied it was murder. Would the courts be? The courts? Sure. When the claims on these policies are filed, they'll be for three million on the basis of double indemnity for accidental deaths. You can bet your last penny on that. Claims haven't been filed yet, have they? Oh, no. Well, I hope we'll have time before they are. Time? To prove it was murder by producing the murderer. 
you uh, you still plan to see and talk to Hard Luck Dennis? Yep. Alone? Yep. When? Sometime soon. When, Johnny? Tell you all about it after I see him. Johnny, it's dangerous. Say, uh, look, if I'm going to stay at that place you told me about over at Lake Mojave, I may as well go and get settled, huh? How do I get there? I'll drive you over, Johnny. No point in that. I've got my rented car. Well, you'll probably want to be seeing the mine, too. Maybe I can be of help to you. Or maybe you just want to be present if I happen to keep a date with Hard Luck Dennis. Now, I didn't say that. You didn't need to. Jake, I want you to stay right here in Kingman so you can keep in touch with whatever the police dig up and still be in touch with me. There's a phone at the Lake Mojave Resort, isn't there? Well, sure, John. Also, don't did. forget that $3 million claim may be filed here at your office any minute. If so, I want to know about it. Now, how do I get to Lake Mojave? Head east on Highway 68, he said. So I did. And 13 miles out of town, I found the little side road, Yucca Trail, that Hard Luck had described over the phone. The next mile and a quarter was about the worst driving I ever encountered. This was nothing but an old wagon trail. Several times, the crankcase and rear axle scraped on boulders in the middle of it. The trail had dropped off sharply from the highway, and as far as I could see, there was nothing but sun-baked rock and gravel of the Mojave Desert, splotched here and there with withered sagebrush, tumbleweed, some weirdly shaped Joshua trees, an occasional yucca plant with its stalk poking upward like a huge candle, and too many kinds of cactus to mention. All of it surrounded by bleak needles and crags of rock by high plateaus and mesas. The going got so bad, I'd almost decided to get out and walk when I spotted the old miner shack that Hard Luck had named as our meeting place. As I approached it, I could see no sign of life around it. Hello? Anybody here? Hard Luck, Dennis? Hello? Nothing. No one. No sign of life at all, huh? The sudden movement at the corner of the shack was nothing but an ancient desert turtle plodding at what he probably thought was breakneck speed toward a shady spot under a sagebrush. Hello! Hi, Luck! Anyone inside there? Shack right. Go and reach raising, mister. Hard luck. Dolly? Yes. Yeah. You come alone, like I said? I don't see anybody else around. Then real stare, Dollar. Don't move. No gun. That's smart. Sit down there on that bench. Sure. Now, what's this all about, Hard Luck? I didn't do it. That's what it's all about. I didn't do it. I didn't kill the Askell boys. You understand that? I didn't think you did. No. Why not? Because if you had, I think you would have skipped the country. You wouldn't have asked me to come here and talk to you. That's right. That's right, Dollar. Oh, you just trying to soften me up. Not much point in that, is there, with you holding a gun on me? If you didn't do it, Hard Luck, why don't you go to the police in Kingman and tell them that? I wouldn't have a chance. Judge or jury, anything else. The whole town's against me. They made up their mind I did it so the best lawyer in the country couldn't save me. Apparently the whole town thought a lot of the Haskell brothers. Surely they had fine men. That's why I picked them to share the mine with me. The only reason you picked them was because they had money and you know it. Yeah, like all the rest. Didn't you see the ore they took out of the Midas Touch? I heard about it. Yeah, rich, rich ore. Twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a ton. And I didn't plant it there. It's been there all the time. Even Captain Harden couldn't find where I'd sorted it because I didn't. Oh, you know that he was out there. Sure I do. I know everything that goes to the fooling around of those bulls and bears in Wall Street. They were too smart for that. So we took them down in the mine, let them chip off some samples of ore, and had them take it themselves down at the assay office. And was that the ore that you said tested so high? Yes, sir. And from the minute they saw the report on it, you couldn't have held them back with a 20-mule team. How much did they go in for? 20000 apiece, cash, on the strength of a handwritten agreement with Hard Luck Dennis that they'd get 30% of whatever came out of the mine. Okay, Jake, now let's get down to business. Are you afraid that something connected with this Midas touch mine and hard luck Dennis has put the Haskell brothers in jeopardy? I'm afraid it's got beyond that, Johnny. Huh? 
Three days ago, Hard Luck took the Haskells over to the mine again for another look. Yeah? Cave in. They finished digging their bodies out yesterday morning. All three of them. Hard Luck Dennis? He wasn't caught in that cave in. Where is he? Who knows? Hmm. Then for you, it's a question of a $3 million payoff on the policies or a million and a half. Yep, Johnny. A question of accident or murder. Then for me, it's a matter of finding a killer. Yeah. Named Hard Luck Dennis. And when you do, look out for him. Yeah. Tell me, Jake, does anybody know I've come here to look into this? Oh, the whole town, I'm afraid. Uh, maybe I should have kept it quiet. Well, huh? sometimes it is better if... Uh, where are the policies? Oh, uh, uh, here, I'll, I'll get them for you. They're right in this little side office. Who are the beneficiaries? There's only one. The girl that is, or that was, married to Kevin Haskell. The other two are bachelors. She lives at the ranch. She filed a claim yet? No. Has, uh... Well, can you make the coroner's reports available to me? Anytime you want. Soon we get through here. I'll wants. take it for you. Johnny Dollar. I mean, this is the office Dollar, of... you're the one I want to talk to. Huh? I want to talk to you. I want you to meet me alone. Oh? Who are you? Tell you where and when in a second. And don't come carrying a gun. Because, mister, I can outdraw you two to one. Who is this? They call me Hardlock Dennis. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, I find that one of the fishermen who hangs around Lake Mojave is a character called Death. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. I mean, this is the office of Jake. Dollar. You're the one I want to talk to. Huh? You heard me. I want you to meet me alone. Oh, who are you? Tell you when and where in a second. Don't come carrying a gun. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pat. This is my third call. Where have you been? Out buying some tackle. Want to go fishing? Fishing? Yeah, I'm heading down to New York State. Esopus River, maybe the beaver kill. Trying to snag myself some nice trout. And Patsy, my fishing is one thing you aren't going to interfere with. Wouldn't think of it. But why don't you try Lake Mojave? Huh? Where's that? Along the Colorado River, out between Nevada and Arizona. What? Sure, be the guest of greater southwest insurance and liability. What are you talking about? I don't know how you'd value those Esopus River trout. 
But there's a fish out there that may be worth three million bucks. Johnny? I'll be right over. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Expense account item one, cab fare from my apartment to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, 8242 North Spring. When I got there, Pat McCracken was standing holding the door of his office open for me. Bye in, Johnny, but don't bother sitting down. Now, what's that supposed to mean? It means you haven't got time, you all pack. Oh, you bet I am. For a trip to the Esopus and some of those pretty rainbows in Eastern Brook Trout, got a new lure oil called Fast Strike I want to try out. I hear it's great. Sorry, but if there's going to be any actual fishing, it's going to be for Lake Mojave Bass. So is you. Here, there are your plane tickets. Here to New York, nonstop to Los Angeles, and out to Las Vegas. And there you'll have to go to Kingman, Arizona by car. Slow down, boys. Slow down. The man to see in Kingman is Jake Kessler at Southwest Insurance. Oh, Pat. Yeah? You mind telling me what it's all about? The Midas touch mine. New racket in uranium? I said Midas. Gold mine. Oh, sure. Well, uh, what's the insurance angle? Ask Jake Kessler when you get to Kingman. Well, but you can at least tell Look, me what... you've only got 20 minutes to catch your plane to New York. You mean if I decide that... And I... with a million and a half dollars, maybe three million at stake, nobody's going to quibble too much over your expense account. Uh, maybe I should take a crack at those Lake Mojave bass. <laughs> expense account items two and three, 290 even, a handful of American Express traveler's checks, and cab fare back to my apartment for my luggage. Then to the airport from my plane to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. It was 11.30 p.m. when the big plane slowly glided down out of the clear starlit sky. And unless you've seen the millions, billions of stars that twinkle brightly through the clear, dry air over the Mojave Desert, you've missed a real thrill. We glided down toward the landing strip on the edge of the town of Las Vegas. From the air, the myriad multicolored lights made the fabulous resort sparkle like a field of jewels. Item 430 cents phone calls to car rental agencies. They were all closed. Item five, 65 cents per cab to the Flamingo Hotel, where I decided to spend the night and drive on to Kingman in the morning. Item six, hotel overnight, food and, uh, incidentals, $178.30. If you know Las Vegas, you know what that word, incidentals, means. Fifteen odd and black. Place your bets, please. Oh, All right, here we go. I'll say this much. I tried to make some expense money on the side, but, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't have tried to cover so many of the gambling joints. If I'd stayed at the Flamingo, or I'd always made me a buck or two at the casino. But this time, Lady Luck just wasn't on my side. Anyway, well... Item seven fifty dollars Deposit on a rental car the next morning. I headed south and east toward Kingman, Arizona. First stop, Hoover Dam, where that tremendous hunk of steel and masonry straddles the Nevada-Arizona state line. And I took a brief but longing look at what I could see of Giant Lake Mead. I wanted to stay right there, break out my fishing tackle, and take a crack at some of the huge lunker bass for which Lake Mead is famous. But duty is duty, or something. Anyhow, I hit the highway again across the hot, dry desert toward the city of Kingman. At this time of year, at this time of morning, the thermometer hits the hundred mark without any trouble at all. And the occasional swimming pools and motels outside Kingman look pretty inviting. Because, mister, I can outdraw you two to one. Who is this? They call me Hard Luck Dennis. Oh, are you planning to add another murder to that of the Hasco brothers? Thirteen miles out of Kingman on the highway east. Little side road to the right, Mark Yucca Trail. Now listen. Mile and a quarter on, you'll see an old miner shack. Be there at three o'clock sharp. And what if I decide to... what I told you. Bring somebody with you or try anything funny and you'll never get out of this desert alive. Hello. Hmm. Uh, that call for me, Johnny? No. No, it wasn't, Jake. Hmm? But I wonder why a killer would call me. <laughs> Oh, 
Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Kingman, Arizona, to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company. Following is a report of expenditures during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Jake Kessler, local representative for Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability, had laid it out pretty clearly. The three Haskell brothers, prosperous gentlemen ranchers, had taken out life policies totaling a million and a half dollars double indemnity which meant that their death in what was supposed to look like an accident at the bottom of the Midas Touch Mine could cost Southwest a cool three million. And the finger of suspicion pointed straight at one hard-luck Dennis, prospector and promoter. It was in Jake Kessler's office that I'd received the phone call from Hardluck. Where did Hardluck tell you to meet him, Johnny? Oh, uh, I'll find it all right. Where? Look, uh, I think I'd better handle this alone, Jake. Uh, Johnny... He's being hunted by every available policeman here in Kingman. He's a killer. Like I told you, he got 20000 apiece from the Haskell brothers cash. Then took him down to the Midas Touch and caved it in on him. All right, even supposing that he did. Why would he do it? Well, daggone it, that's as obvious as those two heads you're wearing. The mine is worthless. How do you know? Because smarter people than him gave it up over 20 years ago. I thought you told me the ore samples he brought out are say at $1,100 a ton. Oh, now, look, Johnny, you know as well as I do that there's more ways to salt a gold mine than there is to skin a cat. You have any proof that Hardluck salted that one? No, but Tad Harding will. Who? Oh. Captain Tad Harding, please. He hasn't lived out in this country all his life for nothing. Where's Harding now? At the Midas Touch. But when he gets back here, you see him. He'll show you that I'm right. Well, if you are, it certainly would point the finger at Hard Luck Dennis, wouldn't it? Can't you understand, Johnny? Hard Luck needed money. He's always needed money. He sold at that mine, got 60000 from the Haskells on a lick and a promise, then caved in the mine on him before they could get wise to it. Good theory. You'll find it's a fact. That's why he skipped out as soon as he... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't have skipped very far, could he? And if he were guilty, why would he want to see me? Yeah, all right, Johnny. Now, listen to me. The Haskells mm. were three of our finest citizens. So the whole town will cooperate with you. So don't do anything foolish like meeting that hard luck Dennis alone. That willingness to cooperate includes you, Jake? You know it does. I'll do anything. All right, then just give me your word. You won't tell anyone that I'm meeting hard luck. Well, now, Because wait if a you do, I'll drop this case like a hot potato. Hmm. Well? Okay, Johnny, for the time being. Okay. I uh, just noticed out the window. Tad Harding's car just pulled up in front of police headquarters. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Captain Tad Harding turned out to be a tall, well-built, cool-headed man of about 40 who impressed me as being able to cope with any situation that might arise. He bore out everything Jake Kessler had told me about the Haskells and about Hardluck. And he added two new and very important bits of information. One, that he'd found nothing whatsoever to indicate that the Midas touch had been salted. On the contrary, he'd picked up some very rich chunks of ore. Two, he'd learned the probable cause of the cave-in and what it meant. I told you it was murder, Johnny. I told you... Tad Harding had found a length of wire rope, one end wrapped around the spool of a powerful hand winch. The other end had very obviously been tied around a pillar, a thick pillar of rock and gravel that had been dug around so as to leave support for the ceiling of a horizontal shaft. Jake and I walked back to his office. That's it, Johnny, no doubt about it. But I drove straight to Jake Kessler's insurance office on East Palm Drive. Oh, hi. You must be Dollar. It's a good name. Come on in. Jake was tall, angular, well-tanned, and dressed in blue jeans, open denim shirt, high-heeled boots, and broad-brimmed hat. He looked as though he'd be more at home on a range pony than in this insurance office. All right, Dollar, let me tell you what this is all about. Okay, thanks, Mr. Kessler. Jake, you want the folks around town to think I'm putting on airs? Okay, Jake. <laughs> hey, by the way, Johnny, I hope you didn't make any arrangements to stay right here in Kingman, did you? No, my bags are still out in the car. Hey, good, I got a place waiting for you down at Catherine Landing. Where's that? Lake Mojave Resort's what they call it now. It's 
Nice cabins, good restaurants, nice people right down at the edge of the lake. Too bad you aren't a fisherman. Well, uh, I uh, just happened to have brought along a couple of rods and reels. Good boy, then you'll love it. Bust your favor down there, I'll show you spots where you can haul in the prettiest mess of largemouth bass you ever saw. Five, six pounds, maybe more. Oh, stop making my mouth water, Jake. I'm supposed to be here working on a case. Well, every man's entitled to a little time off for fishing. And you look like you could stand some. Brother, you are killing me. Listen, Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau said something about a gold mine. Uh, yeah, I contacted Pat because I knew he'd know where to find you. It's the Midas Touch Mine, Johnny. And it's right down that neighborhood where you'll be staying. Well? The mine was abandoned back in the early 30s. Worked out, apparently. But about a year ago, hard luck Dennis took another look at it. Who's he? Dennis? Yeah. Prospector, promoter... Here and there, Arizona, Nevada, California, he's found himself an old mine, pecked away at it, and managed to scratch out a fair living for himself. You said promoter. Yeah, well, that was in Texas, mostly. Never was able to get the full story, but it appears he got some folks to invest in some kind of phony oil stock down there a couple of years ago and had to skip out. Couldn't have been too serious, though, because the law never bothered chasing him up here. Or else he was able to make things look legal enough. Could be, could be. Anyhow, he's been back in this country for a while now, poking around the hills, looking for the big strike again. You know how prospectors are. Yeah, I've heard. Finally, a while back, he started prowling around the old Midas Touch. First thing you know, he got a lease on it. Well, I still don't see the insurance connection. You will. You will. And you won't like it. Okay, go on. Well, next thing we knew, he'd got a report on some ore samples he'd brought into town here at the assay office. Johnny? Well, you wouldn't believe it. Good, huh? Johnny, it looked like a prospector's dream come true, or worth about $1,100 a ton. All right, now, it takes money to work a mine like that, no matter how you figure it. First of all, he had a big pumping job to do. Pumping? Out there in the middle of the desert? That's right. You see, when there was just the Colorado River running down the valley, it was different. But since Davis Dam was put in to form Lake Mojave about ten years ago, the level of the water table in that whole area has raised considerably. Oh, I see. The Midas Touch was in a low spot, and parts of it were dug pretty deep. So now, with seepage from the lake feeding it, the lower level filled up with water. Yeah. Well, now, Jake... Simmer down, Johnny. I'm getting to it. Hard luck, Dennis needed money. A lot of money. So, who should he come to but the Haskell brothers? Three of my best clients. So what happened? I hate to keep chewing your ear off this way, but I've got to give you some background. Shoot. Ernie, Kevin, and George Haskell, they're money men from back east. What do you mean, money men? Oh, brokers. You know, stock market. Oh. Well, they made themselves a big pile of dough, got the usual ulcers doing it, and then decided to give up and get as far away from New York as possible. I don't blame them, but about But this... when they got out here, instead of just retiring and taking it easy, you know, much as you might like it at first, you can get pretty bored just riding around on horseback and hunting and fishing all the time. Get tired of fishing? Huh? Uh, nothing. Go on. Yeah, well, after a few months, they decided they'd have to have something to do with themselves, or at least something to occupy their minds, so they bought up the old Too Lazy Two ranch. Cattle? 80,000 acres north of Eastern here, not very good grazing land, but enough to keep two, three hundred head of beef alive, and with Alex Bundy as their foreman, they did all right. Well, uh, now let's get down to... Gentlemen uh... ranchers, they called themselves, and that's just about what it amounted to. They built a nice house on the property, settled in it, and... Well, not much work, but just enough worry and responsibility so that time didn't hang too heavy on the hands. Now. Now? Now. All their insurance is with my company. The straight life, that is. 500000 apiece. And you're afraid something's going to... Yes, gonna... sir. Half a million each and double indemnity. Wow. A million apiece in case of death by accident. Right. Accident. So, let's get back to hard luck Dennis. Well, that part's easy, isn't it? Is it? Sure. Dennis needs money to open his mine. The Haskell boys are obviously loaded. Right. First off, even before he got his lease, he tried to sweet-talk him into putting up some money. But after a year 